The recent trading losses at J.P. Morgan have reignited debate on financial reform. I'm here with someone who knows a lot about that debate, John Taft. He is the former chairman of the investment industry's largest lobbying group, the Securities Industry and Financial Markets Association. He's also the head of RBC Wealth Management in the U.S. John Taft, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So you were like a big shot. You got hauled down to Washington to testify about regulatory reform. And we get the old Dodd-Frank thing. Then we get these trading losses, and Americans are scratching their heads and saying, what regulatory reform? How did this happen? Well, the trading losses you're referring to are $2 billion plus and growing losses at J.P. Morgan. And my reaction to that, it really has nothing to do with regulatory reform. That was a firm-specific, idiosyncratic trading error that uh, the, the head of J.P. Morgan has taken responsibility for. And I don't think I would want the regulatory system to have been able to catch a loss of that magnitude, which in the scheme of things doesn't threaten J.P. Morgan and doesn't threaten the financial system. So they shouldn't have caught it. Okay, so let's say that the Volcker rule, which is supposed to kind of limit what banks can do, they say you can't trade for your own account, you can hedge. Would this trade have been permitted under Volcker, or do we not know enough yet about the trade itself? Well, the, sh the short answer is we don't know enough about it. But if we take what uh, Chairman Diamond has said at face value, that this was a hedge, it would have been permitted by the Volcker rule, which bans proprietary trading, but provides exemption for hedging activities, which reduce risk, and provides exemptions for market making, which help clients. This would have fallen in the first of those two exemptions. So it's four years after the crisis, basically. Are we safer now? Is the system safer now? And if it is, how is it safer? There's no question. The financial system is safer, sounder, and more secure than it was going into and during the financial crisis. Banks have raised hundreds of billions of dollars of core equity capital. Leverage ratios are down. Derivatives have to be cleared and traded through central exchanges. Regulators have tools they didn't have to deal with failing institutions like AIG and Lehman Brothers that aren't banks. Add to that the fact that you've got you know, probably a third of the 235 mandates in Dodd-Frank already implemented, and we have made a lot of progress towards making the system safer and sounder, but we're not done. So when you look at that trade, getting back to the J.P. Morgan trade, it's this esoteric trade on a trade, right? It's a hedge, it's a derivative, it's a credit default swap. And if the guys at J.P. Morgan Chase couldn't quite figure out the risk in that trade, how can we expect regulators to identify risks in other banks? Maybe not in this system, but maybe a, a smaller bank with bigger risks. How can we keep up with these crazy products? Well, th you have to remember what the role of regulation is and what it isn't. Okay, The role of regulation in the modern financial world is to prevent extreme events or major events, regardless of where they happen or come from, from spreading quickly, the contagion effect, mm -hmm. which is a much greater risk today because we operate in a global economy where financial institutions are interconnected and interdependent. That didn't used to be the same risk when the rules governing the financial system were written at the beginning of the last century, but it is the major risk today. So the point of this trading loss is that it was a two billion dollar loss which in the scheme of J.P. Morgan's operations isn't, doesn't threaten J.P. Morgan, doesn't threaten the system. However, we would hope that with the mechanisms Dodd-Frank set, set up, a new uh, Financial Stability Oversight Council and other types of early warning systems that had the loss been large enough to threaten J.P. Morgan and therefore be systemically threatening, they would have caught it. But, you know, you can't eliminate risk from the financial system and the cost of eliminating all risk is prohibitive. So you have to live with some levels of risk. The point is just contain it. When you gave some testimony back in 2009, um, you said the financial industry was committed to being a constructive participant in the process. But you know, there's been accusations that the industry has fought tooth and nail against regulation. Even Jamie Dimon running around saying it's too much. And I know as part of SIFMA, there's been a lot of pushback. So. How can the industry be taken seriously as a participant in the process if they're pushing back so much? Yeah, there is a narrative out there that every time we go to Washington and we comment on a rule, which is our responsibility to do, that we are trying to obstruct the regulatory reform process. And that's not true. We support regulatory reform. It's overdue. It's needed. The modern financial system was operating under 
outdated regulations. So we support updating those regulations. But not all regulations are written in a way that are going to help the financial system be safer, sounder, more secure. Some will actually damage uh, the system and will create more risk rather than eliminating it. It's our obligation to comment on those. But yes, you're right. In the course of commenting, in the course of providing information, the narrative right now this is part of public trust and confidence being very damaged is that we're trying to obstruct reform. That's not true. We're just trying to make sure that reform is done right. All right, let's talk about a part, one that's near and dear to my heart. I'm going to make you say the F word. It's right. fiduciary. Right. So fiduciary, for people that don't really understand, is this standard to which certain people in the financial services profession are held to. There's usually investment advisors that register as investment advisors. And so then they have to put the interest of their clients before their own interest or their firm's interests. And now there's a whole um, kind of general commenting going on about whether that standard should be applied to all financial professionals. So can you talk a little bit about your view of fiduciary, whether you think it's important to be able to say to the public, yeah, we put you first, you see, we've adopted this, or why they shouldn't? Well, the financial services industry, and I personally have supported a, a fiduciary standard of care for anyone who provides personalized investment advice to individual clients. So what does that mean? Okay, it means that if you have a client that's an individual, mm -hmm. okay, not a corporation, foundation, endowment, but an individual, and you provide personalized investment advice about how they should be investing or managing their wealth, then you should be subject to a fiduciary standard, which is the gold standard in investor protection. There is no higher standard. And as you point out right now, it applies not to certain people, but to certain types of activities, discretionary management of client assets. But it doesn't apply to brokerage activities, which are very different in their character. Many times, if you're acting as a broker, you're responding to a request to do something on behalf of the client. So it's not surprising that the standard is different than when you're taking clients' money and managing it discretionarily. Nonetheless, consumers are confused. Regulations uh, are uh, outdated and uh, inconsistent across different types of activities. And the public policy uh, point, which we support as an industry, is that if you're providing advice to individuals, you should be held to the same standard, no matter what. That is critical right now as one step towards restoring public trust and confidence. John Taft, thank you so much for joining us. And thanks for watching. We're going to continue to follow this story right here on CBSMoneyWatch.com.